Today, we're making not one, not two, but three different styles of lace tighteners, lace pullers. These work great for inline skates, any kind of shoes where you have laces, you're an older person or with arthritis. This is nice round, it fits well in the hand. This one's got a little extra grip because it has the grooves here. And this has a variable angle because of a big carabiner. All of these can be made for well under $2. Interested? Here we go. Here are the supplies you're gonna need. Free paint bucket openers. This is a jumbo five inch aluminum hook I got from Hubbard Freight for under a dollar. End caps for one half inch PVC pipe. Couplers for one half inch PVC pipe. And various lengths of one half inch PVC pipe. Tools you'll need. Some sort of vise. I got this at Lidl, which is a German store, kind of like Aldi, if you haven't seen Lidl yet. And it works like a charm. You'll see this in action later in the video. The tools beyond the vise are pretty basic. A medium grit sanding sponge, some fine sandpaper, and a round file. A hacksaw, or some other kind of saw, and or a PVC cutter, which works very well both on the couplings and on the pipe itself. This is my first version. All I did is I took and cut off the end here and then put this in a vise and turned it up. I like the big handle here because you can change the angles. The one thing I don't like about this sometimes is almost too thick to get underneath a lace in a boot or in a skate. So I have a problem doing that. Sometimes you have to go in inside. Otherwise, this works pretty universal. Easy. One dollar. For version two, instead of cutting off this end like I did here, I kind of left it there as a hook so I could slide it underneath. And I smoothed it down. I'll show you how to do that. And then I figured out either pull it this way or pull it this way. Which would be the better way? Pull it this way? So I've come up with two options. One, <laughs> surprisingly enough, pull it this way. And then the other one, pulling it this way. So let's go into those builds. Paint can openers are usually free and they're kind of inconsistent as far as how long this piece goes out, kind of all over the place. What you want to do is try to get the ones that are longer. So that way when you bend this over, you've got a lot of strength in it right there. If you're gonna go for the shorter one, which completely works, cut this off with a hacksaw. I'll show you how I bent this one. This falls under the, gee, how am I gonna film this category? The other thing you want to do is have something that's nice and wide on the top here. If it's too narrow, it's just gonna not work for you and a little longer on this edge. So this one's just about right. So you put it in the vise and you're just gonna bend it over. You don't need a big heavy vise for this, although a big heavy vise works very well. And then just apply pressure. And bend it, let's see how we did here. You want to do it as straight as possible too, by the way. That's not bad. How straight is it? Eh, it's a little crooked, but I want to rotate it. So I'm actually going to bend this over. So I'm not too worried about it right now. But I would prefer, maybe not, maybe I'm fine. This one is for when the PVC pipe is this way. Now I'm going to bend one over for the PVC pipe when it's this way and this one's hooked up like that. So I'm going to place this back in the vise, only I'm going to do this side now. This should be interesting. There's just a little bit of the round part, or about this much, sticking out of the vise. Okay, using a pair of pliers, and I've actually got some tape on here to protect it, I'm going to rotate this in this direction 90 degrees. Here we go. I'm going to probably have to hold the vise here. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Let's take it out and check. 
All right, so this one is in line with the circle as opposed to and this one that's 90 degrees out from the circle. So you can see the difference between the two. So this is one build and this is the other build. Wow, that actually worked out a lot easier than I thought. Now you can see that I've actually filed down these little nubs because otherwise you just can't get the PVC pipe in there. So the next thing you do is take a file and file these down. It really doesn't take much time at all. See that these are both in the same alignment. Then I was thinking, okay, do I want to pull it this way or do I want to pull it this way? I'm going to try it both ways and see how it works. And I'm going to do different versions of the pipe. So this is a four inch long pipe and I'm going to take a one half inch coupler two end caps and cut this right down the middle you can see where there is this line right here if you're gonna pass this pipe through there you need to take care of that you need to cut it out and then I'm gonna make a line here on this four inch pipe that's gonna be right where this guy goes I've marked off the coupler and I'm using a saw I'm gonna cut right down the middle and then sand it out and you'll be left with two of these. So you assemble this by taking and sliding this on one end and this on the other end and then just pushing them towards the middle. Now you can certainly glue this in place and I think I will once I make sure the build is exactly where I want it. You want a little bit of movement with the PVC pipe, like that. Right? So if, if you can spin it around like this, <laughs> I guess I can't spin it around like this. If you can spin it around like that, I think that works good. But I think I want the flexibility of having a little bit of spin on it. And then you sand the end caps down, and you can put these on. That's build number two. Now, the advantages of build number two, once you get it all together, is You've got a little bit of space here to grip it well, and you're pulling in the same direction as this. I decided I'm going to commit to this build. I'm going to put that right in place like this. Take the half piece of the coupler that has the center part taken out. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. I use rapid fuse. You could use probably super glue too. That would work. And it doesn't take much at all. That's plenty enough. You got about 30 seconds to move it around. And once you got that one side in place, you can glue this side. 30 seconds later and that guy is right in place. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit more on this end and lock this down. That's all it takes. Maybe it's some on the other side. You don't wanna put too much on there because when you push it in place, and that's that's how much movement I want. Here's the difference between one that has been sanded and one that's not. And all I did is take a sanding sponge here and just knock off the littering. It comes off real fast. Just to smooth it out and give it a better look. Put those on the end. And your build is done. You may not like white. White's a good color, but I think I'm gonna jazz it up with a little electrical tape just to give it a little more personalization because I've got three hockey players and I want to have them not get confused. For this build with what I call the aligned paint bucket opener, you need two connectors, two end caps, a 45 millimeter or 4.5 centimeter long piece of half inch PVC and then two 30 PVCs. I know it doesn't make any sense, especially since this is 19, but what you're going to do is you're going to cut one side down, and that's why you're using 30. It only takes about 10 centimeters off, and if you have a bigger hand than I do, maybe 6 inches is fine. I'm making this for teenage hands, 
and I have a fairly wide palm, so five inches I think is just about right. So you can see the difference between the first coupler and the other coupler is. So now you have an end that has a shorter connection and a longer connection. Since all the force is in the center, I'm going to put the bigger connection in the center where all the force is. Why the tape? Because it helps you make a nice straight cut. Otherwise it gets all crooked. You want to make sure that you put the right sides on the right sides and you use them the right ends. So what I'm going to do here to help myself out, especially when I'm making a video, is to take a marker and just mark the black end that goes with in this case, the black end. This is the 45 centimeter one. I've got the two ends marked and the two ends here, so I know I'm putting the right thing together. A little dab of Rapid Fuse. Again, you could use super glue. I don't think you need to use the pipe stuff. Just a little gel. Bing, bing. And then put the pipe in. Press it down. This is the most important part. Put that and ah, oh, but wait a minute. I just remembered. I've got to sand this down. See how nice and smooth and clean that is? That's what the files are for. Don't skip this step. You want the nice smooth edge on here. You want it all smooth so that you're not going to have any chance whatsoever to cut your laces. You can see that's all the way down to the end. That's good fit, but it's a darn good thing I didn't put this on until after I had this all sanded down because it's just so much harder <laughs> once this is all together. Back to the vise, sand this down, smooth it out. I'll show you what it looks like, but it's gonna look just like this. Nice, smooth, and polished. Between the sanding sponge, the round tail file, and the smooth sandpaper. This is like 1500 grit. Use pretty much brown paper bag <laughs> to get the same level of sanding. Some finishing touches, and that is nice and smooth. That is not gonna snag a lace anywhere. Okay, now that I have this nice and beautiful and smooth, I'm gonna put it in to the part that's already been glued. Take my other part here, put just a couple dabs. I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna actually rotate it. Get it in there, good. Make sure that I'm good and solid on that side, good and solid on this side. Got a little bit of wobble, that's fine. I'm happy with that. That will help me align. Now, well, maybe I'm not happy with that amount of wobble. I'm going to cut that tube down, so I got 30 seconds to pull that off before it becomes an issue. Well, that was a bit of excitement. I didn't like how it was wobbling, so I was able to get it off in time. But now I gotta put it back on. I'm gonna do a little fit check here. And even though I sanded it down, and yeah, you're not gonna get a complete fit all the way to the end of the wall, but at least you're gonna be able to adjust. Now I'm gonna glue it down for real, forever. I've applied some Rapid Fuse. I like Rapid Fuse over regular super glue because it gives you 30 seconds so that if you mess up a project, you can recover. The ends of cable ties that you clip off, these are really good sticks for spreading glue. I'm gonna throw them away anyway. Let's make this count. Yep, I can feel it already. And I just want enough to do this. Happy with that now. I'm gonna do the ends. Put the glue in. Use the cable tie to spread it around. And commit forever to this project. There we go. And that is right around five inches. About the same as this. It's a little longer. Feels good in the hand. But as you saw in the intro, I'm not a particular fan of white. So I'm going to color this up in my kids' colors. You could use duct tape, you could use white or black hockey tape. Not so creative. And it's not going to stick out in a crowd. You could write their names on it, you could use marker, but that might get off in your hand. So I'm going to use electrical tape, red, white, and blue, blue, and red. And then I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do on this one. What I've learned about electrical tape is you can put it on too tight, so you want to make sure this is light 
I'm going to put the ends as white also. And I want to keep the color, depending on how thick your electrical tape is, you might be able to see through on the color. This will also allow you to have a little more grip when you're pulling those laces tight. They really are easy to tape. In fact, the middle piece is almost exactly the thickness of this electrical tape. Cut it off, finish it up, and there you go. And I left the ends white. So a patriotic boot lace puller or a hockey boot puller. You got the first one, version 1.0. And now for this one. Hmm, what colors to make it? All right, I got these done. And I'm really happy the way they feel in the hand. This one gives you a little bit of extra grip because of the lines, but it's still comfortable in the hand. It will work for smaller hands. I like this little hook thing here. When laces are real tight, it's hard to get something like this in here on both laces or at least I found that especially if it's already on a young skater whereas this one will go right in real happy with that that pulls that lace real nice and tight that little extra hook there makes all the difference in the world get right under there pull the whole idea is to get my boys to do it themselves. But even if you're maybe elderly and you need some help pulling your laces tight, that will take an incredible amount of force. It will not bend or break on you. There you go. Three different approaches that work great. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciate it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more hockey builds. All sorts of practice gear all things i'm going to make instead of buying because it's so darned expensive coming soon